Hello and welcome. Today we're going to be studying optimization problems. And this is one of the classic uh, calculus applications using derivatives. So let's try to understand more about what we mean by optimization problems. And let me tell, tell you about the ingredients. Okay, so the ingredients are as follows. The first thing you have are some variables. In this case, we'll say they're x and y, right? And we control x and y together, right? We have to make a decision. We want to make a decision about uh, what x and y need to be. Okay. So the goal, though, is, of course, is to maximize, maximize or minimize uh, some other value. Okay, in this case, uh, the value we'll, we'll call z. Okay, and the ingredients here, we need two things. One is what we call the objective function. And that objective function we're going to call f of x comma y. And this function we'll have to find, and it takes the two variables that we want to make decisions about and gives an output of z, right? And of course, we want to find a way to make z as big as possible or as small as possible, depending on what z is and what our goals are. And the other thing we need is, some, uh, is what we call a constraint equation. So this constraint equation essentially says that you know x and y are limited in some way or constrained in some way. And we're going to say that they're constrained by this equation g of x comma y is equal to zero. Okay. And so how you solve, of course, is the, the way you solve it is find um, y in terms of x by solving uh, the g equation. All right, so the idea is we're going to find y in terms of x. And then we plug in into f. So we take f, plug in x, and then plug in y as a function of x, right? And now, and then, of course, that is equal to z. What we want to compute is dz dx is equal to d dx of f of x y of x. And then set that equal to zero, and then we want to solve uh, for the critical point. Uh, x, I'll call it x star, and it's the point that makes the derivative zero. And that's going to be the point that he will maximize or minimize the function. So I've left myself a little space here to just give a first example of what we're talking about. And I'm going to go with the simplest possible example. So the goal here is to uh, find a rectangle with side x and y. So in this case, like that, here's our rectangle. And it's going to have a base of x width and a height of y, okay, with maximum area. Okay, subject to the constraint, uh, to the constraint that the perimeter is equal to, we'll say, 4. Okay, alright, so 
we see here the words constraint, we see maximum area, and we see uh, x and y, which are our variables that we have control over, all right? So what we can see here is that basically z is gonna be our area, and we have a function that describes the area in terms of our two sides. In this case, it's just gonna be x times y. I told you this is a very simple formula, and that's gonna be my f of x comma y. Right, and then my constraint equation is g of x comma y. We know it's gonna be equal to um, the perimeter, which is gonna be two x, right, plus 2y, that's the perimeter, and we want that to add up to 4, so if I subtract 4 from it, I get 0. Okay, so this is my constraint. Right there, that's the constraint. All right, so of course what we do is we have to solve for y here, so I'm going to do that. We're going to um, move, uh, we have 2y, we're going to move the 4 over to the other side. And we're going to move the 2x over to the other side. And then divide by 2. And then we're going to get y is equal to 2 minus x. Right, so that is my equation for, uh, that is my function of y in terms of x. Right, and then we take it and move it into our area equation. So we have z is equal to x. And now we multiply in the 2 minus x there, and this right here represents the y of x, okay, and we plug that into our objective function. And the next thing we do, of course, is take the derivative of dz dx. In this case, it's going to be 2 minus 2x, okay. When we take the derivative, I'm going to set that equal to 0, and I'm going to get that x star, my critical point, is going to be equal to 1, all right? And I do that by solving this equation right there. Okay, so from that, we can clearly see that y star, the other point, has to be 1, all right? So it's no surprise, basically, that this is a square. A square maximizes the area, given you have a fixed amount of perimeter to deal with, in this case, the square that maximizes the area has a side length of one on each side. I told you this is the simplest possible problem I could do that's an optimization problem, but I hope that gives you an idea of what's going on here. All right, so what I'm going to talk about now, I'm going to do one more example for you. Uh, we're going to do another one involving, um, we're going to do another one. So, you know, problem two now is going to be maximizing volume of a cylinder. We're going to maximize vol volume of the cylinder. Uh, um, or sorry, my mistake. So we're going to maximize volume of a cylinder uh, given a fixed surface area. And we're going to say that surface area is equal to, um, we're going to say that surface area is equal to uh, uh, 4 pi. Okay, so let's do it. Okay, so let's come up with our equation. So we have a V equation. That really is going to be that Z, right? And we know that's going to be equal to uh, the height times uh, the area. Uh, oops, it's going to be pi times r squared. So we have a cylinder like that. And that cylinder has a radius parameter and a height parameter. So clearly, r and h are going to be the, the, the variables. Okay, great. All right. So um, if that if volume then is our my objective function is this right here, okay? So this right here is the objective function. 
The next question is then, all right, what is the constraint? Okay, the constraint is going to be the fixed surface area. So we know that we basically have two end caps. Each one of those is going to be pi r squared. All right, and then we also have the, 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 the wrapping around. So we have that and the two end caps right there, there, and one there. So the wrap, and we know that's going to, the wrap is going to be um, uh, basically h times 2 pi r. All right, let's see if we can do that. So what we really have here is then, then basically the area, which is going to be equal to 4 pi, is equal to 2 pi r squared plus um, it's going to be equal to uh, 2 pi h times r. And we know that whole thing has to be equal to 4 pi. So there is our constraint equation. Okay, We can simplify this up a little bit. We can make that 4 pi uh, and then that's equal to 2 pi. I'm going to write it out again here just to make it very clear. We have a 2 pi, and we have an h and an r right there. Um, and then what we need to do is divide everything by 2 pi to get rid of those. And we're left with 2 is equal to r squared plus h times r. I can factor out 1 r there. And that's just, uh, well, actually, I don't know if we need to do that. I think we can leave that alone. All right, so in this particular case, what I want to do then is I'm going to solve for h and make it a function of r, which looks like it's pretty easy to do. So what I have here is I have to solve this equation for h. Uh, so we're going to have 2 minus r squared is equal to h times r. We're going to divide both sides by r like that. And that's going to give us 2 over r minus r is equal to h. And that's going to be a function of r. All right, so there we go. The next step to do is basically substitute it into our volume equation. So the volume equation will now be a function solely of r. And that's going to be pi r squared times h. In this case, it's going to be 2 over r minus r. Okay, so that right there again is that that h of r part right there. Okay, the next thing we need to do is make this a dv, dv dr. We need to take the derivative and set it equal to zero. Uh, in this particular case we're going to have pi and then we're going to have 2. Um, that's the derivative of that first one and then minus uh, 3 uh, r squared, like that. Now we're going to set that equal to 0, and we're going to solve for r, and we're going to get, um, uh, we're going to get, so clearly here the pi isn't doing anything in particular, so really this is going to be uh, 2 thirds is equal to r squared. That turns into an r is equal to plus or minus root two-thirds. We only need the positive. So we only need the positive r because r is always going to be a positive number. And so what we have here, the, the critical value is going to be r of square root of two-thirds. There we go. All right. All right, so we might want to figure out what size is this can, uh, this cylinder here. Well, if r is two th uh, root two-thirds, what is going to be h? Is h going to be bigger or smaller? So really this is going to be 2 times root 3 halves minus root 2 thirds. Um, so that's a positive number. That's nice. Um, and it's going to be a little bit bigger, I believe, than r in particular. So we have the dimensions of the can that maximize the volume given a fixed amount of surface area around the can. 
All right, so uh, that's another example of a optimization problem where we have to identify, again, those constraints, uh, the variables, and then, of course, the objective function, which in this case, uh, um, the, the objective function here is going to be that volume equation right there. All right, so once you identify all those things, the objective function typically comes from some sort of uh, physical law or a geometric principle or geometric definition. Uh, the constraint equation also can come from things like that or maybe some business constraint. Uh, all of which incor are incorporated together to get you an answer. All right, thank you very much.